Tim and Gar back with Rescue Methods. And, and to, in this segment, we want to kind of talk a little bit about Halion tools, prying tools, and, and, and the precursors to Halion tools, uh, or the, the Halion that we all kind of consider to be the, the gold standard or, or the design that we consider to be the gold standard for the Halion bar. Um, if you've never taken a look at the history of the Halion tool, strongly would encourage you to do that. Jump online. Google Hugh Halligan and see what see what his contribution to the, today's fire service was. I think that uh, you know it's always important to to kind of have the thought process of looking back to understand what what we're doing now and where we could be going. So <clears throat> in that discussion, you know, the first tool I would bring to your attention is the old style claw tool. Uh, very versatile tool in its day. Um, I think that, you know, I know our company, we have kind of, we have definitely shot away from this tool just because of the limitations of it, but it has some good uses. Absolutely. I mean, it's a, it was a precursor, uh, you know, to the Halligan. Mm -hmm. um, it has a lot of the same properties that the Halligan has. It has the same forked end. Uh, you know, it is good. Uh, it is a good forcible entry tool. You know, not nearly as good as a Halligan, but it sure. can be used in a pinch. Um, you know, we still carry them on our ladder companies. Like I said, it's kind of like the, 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 the pick-headed axe. Mm -hmm. It's on the truck. It doesn't come off very often. Mm -hmm. So uh, still a nice tool to have around, but, you know, not one of your first-line forcible entry tools. If you do have something that you need to pierce or, you know, you need to create a small uh, or to start a small hole, though, maybe to do a conventional door peel or something like that. This might be something that you use in conjunction with a set of irons, just because of the, the sheer capability of that. Uh, one thing that this tool does do a decent job with, and I have used it before, is uh, lifting a manhole cover with it. Uh, you can take this hook or this, um, the piercing end of this tool, put it right in the top of, of, of the manhole cover. It gives you a lot of leverage. You can get that end up, slide another bar, a pinch bar on the other side, and you can roll that manhole cover up. So that is one of the things we use it for, is to access manhole. So consider the claw tool. <clears throat> Additionally, we w I would bring to your attention the, the, the standard crowbar. Uh, it's a little small for what we use. This, ha this is probably a, a 36 inch or 32 inch version. Uh, it's relatively lightweight. All of us commonly have them in our garage and we utilize them in the same fashion. The, the one, one thing that I notice is, is that they've, uh, you know, the concept here is they've got a wide blade at both ends, you know, so really it's fairly similar to a Halligan in terms of use and capability. It's just been adap adapted for home use. Absolutely, not nearly as versatile, but it, you know, it doesn't take up a lot of room in the truck. It's still good to have them around. Um, you can still use them, you know, in ancillary functions. Sure. Um, so it's a nice tool to have. Absolutely. And how often do you find that maybe you uh, you need multiple prying tools in the same location if you don't have it? You know, so it's a it's a tool in a toolbox. Something to consider. <clears throat> Additionally, you know, I I don't think any discussion of prying tools is is complete without talking about the old Hux bar. Um, you know. Definitely not my first tool of choice when it comes to forcible entry, but it had its use in, 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 in the day. And I think that it's important to mention, uh, I'm sure some of our viewers out there are going to have versions of these or, or these, you know, riding around on a truck somewhere. Absolutely. I mean, these were standard equipment on engines and ladders, you know, throughout the history of the fire service. Uh, basically, you're taking a tool and you're combining two or three things that it can do. It's got a prying, um, you know, a set of forks on one end, prying uh, ends. It's got uh, two uh, areas here that you can open up hydrants, and it's got the piercing hook on the other end with a small striking edge. So, I mean, it's got some uses. Um, it was definitely a popular tool 40, 50 years ago, but of course, you know, just like some of the other tools we mentioned before, it's fallen out of favor. I agree, and uh, probably rightfully so. <clears throat> the last thing that the last area that we would talk about is the standard the the standard Halligan bar. Uh, in my opinion, th this this is a pro bar uh, made by K Tool. It is this is probably the gold standard uh, in my humble opinion when it comes to Halligan tools. Would you agree? Uh, the Halligan tool in general, I think, is the single best fire service tool that you can possess. 
Um, I rarely will come off a truck, be it an engine, ladder, rescue, whatever, without having one of these in my hands. It's what I will take this thing pretty much anywhere I go, this tool will go with me. Uh, certain brands I choose over others, or certain styles I should say I choose over others, uh, but the Pro Bar is definitely one of the styles that, that I'm a big fan of. Agreed. And there's a lot of different manufacturers out there, but um, you know, again, we're not trying to necessarily endorse any one over the other. This is a lot of personal preference, as well as <clears throat> there's some monetary components that come into this. One of the nice things about this particular tool is that it is a single piece, it drop forged um, tool. It, so being a single unit, it is structurally uh, strong in many different situations and in uh, many different aspects and uses. Absolutely. And when you get into the different styles and different brands of uh, Halligan tools, um, I am a fan, like Tim said, of the single piece uh, drop forge. Uh, this model here is by Paratech. Uh, it is their SPF series. This is the FDNY New York spec. And uh, basically they have taken what the guys at New York like and what I also like, mm -hmm. and they have, uh, they have spec this tool out and made it to, to FDNY specifications. Um, some of the subtle differences you will notice is up here on the ads end, uh, this is a little thicker and has a little slower taper than the, uh, than the, the Paratech bar that we have here. It's a little thin, thinner and it's got a little bit more of a hump back in it mm -hmm. and comes down to a smaller taper. Mm -hmm. um, I do like this, uh, you get a little bit better gap out of it, you, those tighter door sets, uh, you can get this in there a little bit easier with less force, less striking force needed, mm -hmm. uh, and you can get that initial gap. The, um, the, the points are basically about the same. They're about the same spec. Um, they add the, the hooks here where you can put a chain through, a carabiner, mm -hmm. um, on the uh, New York spec. And then on the fork, um, from this side it looks very similar. All right? If we turn the tools to their side, you can see that the, the FDNY spec, or this, this Paratech model, is a little bit thinner mm -hmm. and once again has a little bit more taper to it. Comes down to a little bit uh, more of a point. And then on the inside of the forks, you can see this is basically a straight edge on the Pro Bar. On the Paratech, they add an in, they cut, cut an inset in here. Mm -hmm. It almost makes this like a cutting edge inside. So when you're using this to go um, over a padlock, over a chain, or even ripping metal, you can actually rip metal with this. This works very nice inside these forks. Uh, I agree. Uh, you know, I, I personally have both styles and I've used both styles uh, con considerably and uh, I'm a big fan of both. Uh, it just worked out that way. The <clears throat> When it comes to Halligans, there are a lot of things that people do that you'll notice uh, in, in one way or another to sort of customize or make it their own. And I think that one of them, there are some, some things that are very common and then others that are that may be not so common. I think probably the most common thing that people do is to file or, or take the back side of the, the, sho the those small shoulders off of the back to, to give to give you a little bit easier uh, rounding on the door jam. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, this is, this is my bar here. It is a, the exact same bars that you have. It's a pro bar and I have adapted it basically to my spec, mm -hmm. what I like to see. It's very similar to the, uh, to the, to the uh, Paratech bar that we showed before. I have taken on the ads end, I have reduced the, uh, the thickness of the ads end up here. I've taken that and I've ground it down and I've made this a very casual hump sure. in it. So I've made this a little bit smaller, a little bit sleeker. Um, I've ground it down, and while I'm grinding it, I, I, I spray it with water uh, out of a garden sprayer because I don't want to temper the steel and make it real brittle. Absolutely. I think it's very important to note that if you're going to customize your tools, um, it, it's important to not temper the, the steel because you will get chipping and you will get uh, failure of, of the edge primarily um, areas so if you're going to dry file make sure that you're doing it with a standard flat machine file mm -hmm. you take nice e even easy strokes work it a little bit at a time allow the heat to dissipate make sure that it's not getting too hot um, additionally what i like to do is i like to have a nice gradual edge on the on the ads end and uh -huh. i like it to be fairly sharp 
not as sharp as like a wood chisel, sure. but I like it, like it to be nice sharp, come down to a nice point, and then I take a, a high speed sander and I take all my grind marks off and I want this really, really smooth. Uh -huh. So it has, so it goes into that door really, really nice with, with you know, a little amount of uh, resistance. I agree. The, the, the sharpness on, on the actual ads component is very, uh, is a very important factor to consider because if we go to shear bolt heads off the back side of a door, that's where that having a sharp blade is going to really help out. Now, obviously, as Gar said, you don't want it super sharp, not wood chisel sharp, but uh, it, it's not a whole lot, it's not really that big of a deal for us to go back, clean up that edge once we shear those bolts, and, and we're right back in business and, and serviceable with our tool. A absolutely, and on the pick or on the, um, on the pike, whatever you want to call it, um, I like to keep it somewhat sharp um, also. Like I said, not so sharp that you're going to pierce your skin or, or, or get hurt with it. Right. But I like a nice edge with it because typically when I'm doing roof work, I will take this and jam it through the roof decking itself and use this as a foothold. So I want to be able to easily take this right down through the roof deck. Sure. <clears throat> as, we, as we turn the tools up and, and some of the modifications that commonly get made, you know, obviously we talked about taking the shoulders off the back side. Some people will, will even uh, file or take the thickness of the, uh, of the very end of the forked, uh, of the fork sections and, and narrow them down a little bit to make it just a little bit more gradual uh, curvature. Absolutely, that's what I did with mine. I took the, on the back side of the fork, I took and I probably took about, you know, if you can see, if you can compare these two tools, like I said, from the factory, these were pretty much exactly the same. Uh -huh. And mine just has a little bit more gradual um, uh, curvature to it. And I kind of, those shoulders that you've taken your shoulders off, I've basically taken that and kind of continue it down the tool. It gives it that little bit of a bend and I polished it up once again to make it very, very smooth so it really glides into that door jam nice and easy. For mm -hmm. This, <clears throat> what, additionally, one of the things that I've done on mine is I, I've taken about a, a three inch measurement and I've scored the, the, the forks all the way around to give me a depth measurement for uh, when I, to measure by when I'm utilizing it on inward swinging doors. Uh, you know, it's, it's not a 100% guarantee, it's just one of those things that, hey, I know I'm, I've purchased at least three inches. Absolutely. Another thing that I've done on mine, and I see that you've actually done on yours also, is when these come from the factory, they come with a rounded edge right here coming from the, from the shaft itself up to the fork end. Mm -hmm. And I took a grinder and I square these off and I make a very abrupt shoulder. And the reason why I do that is for when you're doing a force in a confined area or if you're doing a one-man force, I can use this as a striking edge to get my purchase into the door. It's a great technique to use, and uh, <clears throat> it's a great thing to do. You have to, uh, it takes some time if, if you're doing it. Uh, um, this bar is still fairly new, and you can see I haven't, I haven't quite finished all of my modifications. So the longer that you have the tool, particularly a, a, a single piece drop forge uh, halligan, the longer that you have it, the more, the more things that you find you want to do to it. And, uh, you know, very versatile tool. I don't think that uh, my personal tool cache would be complete without at least a couple of them. Yeah, absolutely not.